So this week's video we're featuring this transition mountain bike. Customers complaining of squeaking, which you'll hear now. So we had that frame squeak, the dropper post was not working at all effectively, the back wheel was buckled and it wasn't changing gear. So we always start with the problems. First and biggest problem is the squeak, so we remove the pivot points here and clean them all up and weigh up which one is actually causing the squeak. So I started at the easy ones at the top and worked my way down and unfortunately I had to go all the way down. But we clean these up, degrease them with a chain cleaner, lubricate them as necessary and fit them back in so that I'm content and, and happy that each of the ones that I'm dealing with is not causing the squeak. So I've done that one, I, I removed the shock at the bottom here because that gives me a much more travel on the on the frame to try and solve where that noise is coming from. And also, as you see there, I just lubricated and put that back together. So then we took off the, the ones that sit in the bearings. This one has a bearing here, you'll see there. So we cleaned up, I felt those bearings. Those bearings did have wear in them, but the, they wouldn't have been caught. You know, usually a bearing doesn't cause a squeak. It's a different kind of sound and feel. So I cleaned all that up anyway, because uh, you know th there is a chance of that rubbing and causing a squeak. It wasn't what was causing it, so we put that back together. And yeah, with this bike we went on quite a journey really. This this took us many many hours. You know these videos once they're edited down, it looks like it's easy, but this sort of work takes hours and hours and hours to solve and, and pinpoint problems like this. But yeah, that one was all right. So I decided I had to take the bottom bracket off and look at the bottom squeak. Now he was complaining of gear shifting here and it wouldn't, once it was in first, it wouldn't drop down without a little bit of help. So I established that it was the cable. So you can see it's now dropping there when I force it. So in fact, I'm taking the bottom bracket off, off come the chain. And you can see here, this was an unexpected problem. The bearing has a pre-loader, which is there, which was C solid and that crank set barely turning. I'm amazed those bearings haven't been blown to bits just because they were so tight. So I released the pedal arm there to, to be content in my mind that it was the preloader and thought right I'll deal with that as we go. So off comes the chain set, you can see how grimy this is, it's very very thick with mud and dirt um, and this bike was spotlessly clean when it came in, it was a credit to the owner. Everything on it you can see was, was thick down on that bottom bracket and there was a little bit of water in the frame there as well. We had this anodized bolt that was sticking right through on this guard and so that was something I was going to address. But we took this off and then we saw this wear. Now as soon as we took it off, silent. So it was actually the chain guard and chain keeper that was causing the squeaking. You can see it was rubbing against that frame so this was the once we'd sort of solved the pinpointed the location of the squeak, we could now go ahead and solve it. So we cleaned up this bottom bracket, the bearings were, were fine, even though they've been over pre-tensioned, and so we just get everything clean up here and everything goes into the ultrasonic cleaner, which has water-based degreaser in it. And while that's simmering away in there, or agitating away, we start on this rear derailleur cable. So we're getting all these bolts undone and feathering it through. Now this was an internal rooted cable. I wanted to change the outer and the inner. It's quite a complex one. So it's got these little frame guides for the cables, but they grip the cable. So you can't just slide it through. So they all have to come out. And again, had a quite a little array of bits on the bench when we've done this. And we use the Park Tools internal routing guide tool which is just a thick cable with little threaded ends and magnetic ends and you choose the one that you need for the job so that helps us pull this outer out and then to the rear chain stay there it was the the park tools wouldn't actually go in so i used an old inner pulled out the old outer and that gave me something to guide it through as, as i was going which you'll see in a moment or two so now we're just threading that. These are stainless steel cables I use. They're what we call super slick. They're a nicely tight wound cable. So these are good cables. So we're beginning to get there now. So we've got the new outer in and we're just refitting those guides. And they're little Allen keys. So there's two halves and a little Allen key fitting on each of those. And there's one at the top, one at the bottom. So we get those back in. 
that and then obviously replace any tie wraps or anything we took off the bike that the customer may have added at some point they would have been added for a reason so we try and redo those so we've got that one sitting in there now and now that's the other problem that he had was this dropper post wasn't working at all so we got that out of there and there was just a little rubber there so I put a little bit of tape on the old cable just to stop that dropping into the frame and now we start to strip this down this was quite complex it took us a couple of problems there that we figured out off camera while servicing it to make sure it was working okay this was long overdue a cleanup that's for sure you can see this grease in here it gone very sticky yeah there was no you know and you see here inside the tube the amount of grit and debris in there it, it, it would never have well, I mean, it was ready for service, you know, so that's that's why the customer brought it to us. You know, we give this a clean up there. We use chain cleaner rather than degreaser because it evaporates and it's a good product to use this one for cleaning up parts like this. You can see it, it's got quite high pressure to it, so it washes stuff off as well. Clean all these little keyways up and everything and get that nice and clean and degrease all the bits that are going back in. So these little keyways that are actually what cause it to slide, they're a nice sort of little brass fitting that, that slides up and down inside there. That all my, you know, and all the threads and everything else. And just re-oil these inside there. There's a damper and those felt washers sit on that damper to keep it lubricated. So we soak those in oil. And then we're just refitting these keyways and re-greasing all the shaft. And I'll go those oil, these have been sitting in oil onto the damper and the ends and we start to get that together and yeah you know, like a little jigsaw puzzle this one so don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel we like to see you here every week and it's always good to do these videos we enjoy doing them so it's nice that people are out there subscribing to us so do subscribe and then we're getting the old cable out now I left the outer in this because it's a really tricky one to reroute, and this this did go through smoothly, so there was no need to really replace it. It was, you know, the the new inner went smoothly into there. So that's now ready for refitting. So we get that back into the bike. You have to pull the outer down as you push the tube into the bike, and then get the new cable onto the shifter or onto the release. I suppose you would describe that as just nip that off so that it's just tucked in under that lever where the finger goes refit that onto the bike frame onto the handlebars rather and that's looking nice now and you can see that now really shoots up quick and with no delay and that's ready to go so next up we just clean up this chain set get all that grease off you can see how shiny that piece on the bench is now and amazing what a difference of a little bit of degrease from an ultrasonic cleaner makes it's one to have in your toolkit for sure and then we just clean up this chain the chain wasn't stretched too badly but it was grimy in between the links so we had to clean that up and then of course this problematic chain guard at the bottom here we just give all these bits of clean up and these bearing covers and everything else that's all to do link to that bottom bracket and yeah everything's looking good there so all the parts now are ready to go back on the bike. Now, just before I refit all that, I re-torqued up all of these pivots that I'd taken apart, to make sure they were all correctly torqued. And then we had that little anodized bolt that I showed initially that was a little bit too long, so we shortened that before refitting. And, you know, that can catch undergrowth and things and potentially the frame. And now we're just figuring this out. We don't want this rubbing, so we know we need to space it out. So a couple of little washers there and, and some little Loctite on the bolts. And that's all it needed. I mean, there was literally probably two millimeters and it was the difference between the squeak and not the squeak. So that's all going back together there. And this little anodized bolt that we shortened is the last one of the three to go in there. So that sits in there and then we torque them up just to make sure they're all the right the right torque and a little bit of grease and everything this is the pre-loader for the bearing that was seized and too tight for some reason so we just got a nice little bit of grease under that to stop it seizing again plenty of grease on the parts to go in well I say plenty we put a, a smear on them. I don't never overload them 
And I just use a little bit of grease just to hold those bearing covers on just while we put it back together. And then next up we torque up that chain set. You always torque this up first and then do the preloader, which is what I've just done there. And you saw that spun easy. It's a shame we didn't show that a little bit more on that edit, but that, that spun easy. Now this I, I reverse torqued. My torque wrench goes up to 22 newton meters and this went right up to that. The through axle was way too tight. You can strip off the threads either in the axle or the fitting. It's not good practice to over tighten those. Now this wheel, the customer said he felt it had movement in it and it was a little bit buckled and sure enough, it was all over the place. The park tool tension tool that I use there, we write all those numbers down that we get. We get everything to within a tolerance that we're happy with. And then we graph that, which you'll see shortly, to make sure there is, this is it originally, the, the red triangles are ones that are either too tight or too loose. So this was it originally, you can see there's ones that are too tight and that's afterwards. So that wheel is spot on. There's never any question about a wheel that we're sending out in terms of tensions. We don't take chances. We do it all with a gauge and a computer program to make sure it's right. So the wheel's now spot on, so we just give it a little wash off because we do love to give our bikes out nice and clean. Now the brake cleaner, not only do we use it on everything, but we also use it on brakes. You know, you can see this bike's clean. It's not a dirty bike, and that's what we got. It's just road film that sits on the disc. So it's well worth doing that and having that in your arsenal to keep the bike nice. We talked up the disc bolts, talked up the cassette. And then we just give anything. We just literally used a damp cloth on this bike because it was spotless. The customer cleaned this, you know, he'd spent a lot of time cleaning this up. You can see we still get a bit of grime off the bike. And then we just dry it off with a microfiber towel before we begin to put it all back together. So next up, that through axle, we just give that a little bit of grease because they're aluminium and they can stick inside an axle and become a real problem to get out. But if it's just lubricated, it just stops it sticking together. And then we talk that out. The torque is actually written on these axles and so you know there's no question of getting it wrong you just do them up to that specification along goes our nice clean chain and the chain catcher back on there and then we reroute the new derailleur cable through which is easy because obviously we've put the new outer in Get that little slip off and we just lubricate the derailleur because it was sticking not only was it the cable and now you can see it just up to one and all the way back down again it's nice and free and changing gear as it should so like I say this bike was sticking in first and second it wouldn't change at all once we've checked all the gears we oil the chain I tend to do this afterwards because it keeps everything cleaner I don't have to keep going up and down the gears and then this was just a little bolt we know it's again another anodized bolt on this chain keep it was just a little bit long you can see those little silver marks on the gray those three there they were all caused by that bolt and the bike at various stages of compression so we shorten that next up we go through our servicing routine which is mainly with the torque wrench all the way through the stem bolts were loose these handlebar bolts were loose the saddle bolts were loose so we go through every nut and bolt on the bike we had a little issue with this one again another anodized aftermarket bolt it wouldn't torque up and when i took it out you can see the thread there is all gone silver and stripped out stripped out of the shifter as well so this is actually a little problem so we had to just recut the threads just to put a nice clean thread into there and then we just used a stainless steel slightly longer bolt that we could then torque up to the correct setting yeah that was just the, the bolt was just slightly too short for the job really and talking it up to the correct spec it wouldn't do it so that's all nice we just double check those ones next to them and then just the caliper bolts and just check those calipers are free and not touching the disc when they're rotating and we were happy with that the brakes on this bike were awesome had an awesome set now this is a little trick you can use a torque wrench against the tire just to do up your pedals then we just inflated the tires and we're almost ready for this bike to be ridden we just checked the air in the shocks which were well where they should be as you can see how loose this saddle was which again is a good reason to have a bike service and here we go here it's silent right now. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.